welcome everybody. Thank you for coming to Evans Library for our Sustainable Happiness event as part of our celebration of Earth Week this week. We are very excited to have Rajesh Maniski with us. Um, I'm going to start by introducing Tushar Matacharya, who has been our meditation teacher here at Evans Library for the last two semesters. He comes in twice a month and leads meditation students for the faculty, staff, and students here. And he gives us a lot of serenity and peace. So we thank you and thank, thank you. you for being your guest tonight. Thank you, everyone. And actually, thank you to the library, Evans Library, Nancy, Lisa, Petra, and all the others for putting this event together. I'm very um, honored and it's a delight for me to introduce to you Mr. Rajesh Jagasia. Rajesh has been teaching uh, meditation and yoga all over the world. Um, he is a teacher with the Arvasa Foundation and uh, you know, I recently had been touring the U.S. for the past six months and while he's uh, is preparing to go back to India, we planned this talk for all of us here at FIT. Um, so it's for all of us to enjoy. Um, let's give Rajesh a big round of applause. <laughs> So let me ask by how many have been to India? How many want to go? How many want to go? <laughs> so then let's do the talk in India. I think we can just take a flight. Right? <laughs> just a little expensive, but I think it's okay. <laughs> Everybody agrees to that. <laughs> you know, when you talk about happiness, you cannot talk about happiness without talking about stress. What do you say? Isn't it? You have to know what stress is and when it strikes you. If you understand this, that it is possible to get stressed. In everyday life, it is possible to get stressed. The good thing about stress, then there is a bad thing about stress. The good thing about stress is that you want to become happy after that. You want to work. You want to find ways to become happy. Isn't that a good thing? It's a good thing. You want to, so if you have some, you know, if you have pizza over five days, then you want to go on a healthy diet. <laughs> but if you're on a healthy diet for 30 days, you don't appreciate it. But when you have, you have junk food, go and have something junk for five, ten days, and you say, okay, let me find out where is that healthy food. Let me search for it. Now, healthy food by itself is natural. It's not something which is elite. It's not something which is which you have to find. Surprisingly, it has become like that. Similarly, happiness is something which is natural to you. It's not something elite. It's not something which you have to find. It is you. But to understand this, we have to first understand that it is possible that all of us get stressed. Right? Now, what usually happens is when we get stressed, we want to find out who is the person whom I should blame. <laughs> should I blame the dog? Should I blame the mother-in-law? Should I blame the boss? Who is the person I should blame? You know, it is like, I always define stress like this. I say that, you know, if you are going to drive, you see so many bikers in Melbourne. You know, it's a very silent place. In Melbourne, you can't get stressed because everything closes by 6 o'clock here. <laughs> You know, when you want to find something after 6 o'clock, it's an ordeal, it's stressful. <laughs> if you want to find where to eat after 6 o'clock, let me tell you, it's not easy. <laughs> so, here, if you are going to bike it out, just let's take from here, you go to the ocean. There is some, some dust you will accumulate, right? Now, what do you say? This dust I accumulated there, or do you know how to take a shower? <laughs> when you don't know how to take a shower, then I start attributing this is the reason of my stress. This is the reason of my stress. It is this person. It is this past episode. It is these objects. It is my own state. So when I don't know this, if I know how to de-stress, would I really care that every day I take a shower for my body? Right? Every day you, you know, is it every day? Because in India you should when I talk in a library, I say every day they say, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so let me just match cultures. 
So when you say every day you take a shower, you every day you brush, what do I do for my mind? The stress is there, you could get it from anywhere, anywhere, but you need to know how to deal stress. So the whole objective here is that if I learn how to deal stress, I don't have to wait for that moment when there is a breakup that I'll de stress that time. I don't have to wait for a moment when you know someone leaves you, when you fail. No, it's not. Don't accumulate it. Make sure that you have ways to de stress. Let it not become a mountain. Then it's very difficult. But if I learn how to do it, then you know the world is a better place. The world is a safer place because the moment you get stressed, somebody out there is going to be blamed. Somebody out there is going to be, you are going to, you know, it's like a conduction reaction. You get stressed and you are going to multiply it up to everyone. If one person in the family is stressed, if the wife is stressed, let me tell you, hold on. All the husbands, are you there listening? Yeah, you're there. <laughs> if your wife is here, don't say yes. <laughs> Be diplomatic here. <laughs> if the husband is stressed, are the wife listening? <laughs> so, the whole objective is this. First is, I would say, don't deny stress. Don't deny stress. Because uh, keep quoted and say, today, I'm, today, you know, I feel low. You don't have to. And what should I do for it? What should I do for it? How can I help myself? This is what we call meditation. Meditation is an agreement that there is a possibility of stress anywhere, anytime, and I learn how to calm down my mind. At will. You know, this is very important. You calm down your mind at will. Many times we don't know how to calm down my mind and I take support of other people. And that's when you become very dependent. You can't handle your own mind that time. I take support of shopping with someone else's credit card. <laughs> right? Uh, if with my credit card, it's more stressful. <laughs> someone else is stressful. So, how do I relax this? And this, this is one step number one. Step number so step number one basically is life has stresses. You could catch it from unknown sources, like the way you could catch dust from anywhere when you are biking it out. That's how. But when I go back home, I just take a shower and I come back to my natural state. My natural state is being happy, being joyful, being energetic, being, you know, resourceful, being sharing, being connected, being having a communion with people. This is my natural state. The second one is, the second one I would say is, start looking life from a bigger context. What do you say? Have you taken off in an aeroplane sometimes? You take off in an aeroplane and have you noticed the same house which you look at looks so tiny from there or maybe you know, you don't see it. Forget about the house, imagine the earth. Just compare it with Jupiter is, you know, visible these nights from the from planet Earth. Just look at that. From planet Earth is a dot in the solar system, a minuscule dot. So look at life from a bigger context, bigger context. When you are stressed, it is important that you look at life. Okay, what about after 30 years? What after 40 years? What about after 100 years? What happens? What happens? Even your Facebook account won't be there. <laughs> you know, even your Instagram that you have been taking selfies with such passion, even they won't be there. So, so what is the point to get stressed? Some small things. So today I am giving you permission to get stressed. Okay, I am giving you permission. But I don't want to get, I don't want you to get stressed if you don't find your toothbrush in your mouth. I want you to get stressed about why is the ozone layer depleting? 
you want to get stressed, it has become part of your system, why not take some bigger project and get stressed? Why, why not see, Ronnie was just telling me that she is working for the homeless people in America and she has so many projects that she has been doing and this one is sponsored by the Canadian government and she's told me that she has this project in which she wants to make sure that everyone in America has a home to stay and you know a good life. So she has taken this project, well she's not stressed about it, but she'll talk about it maybe. So if you want to get stressed and you love it, some people love getting stressed. Anyone agrees to this fact? Not anybody will agree. You know, the opposite person, person you're staying with will agree. This one is one. Some people get stressed over very small, tiny things. It's like, you know, when you get stressed, it's like the small uh, dust particle entering your eye. After that, everything looks blurred. It's not the, the world is not blurred, it is the dust particle which has to be removed. So look at life from a bigger context, look at it from an eagle's view, look at it from like 30,000 feet high, how you look at like the space and you know, and you'll understand that one day my Instagram account is also not going to be there. Why am I stressed about what? That is the first, second thing. That's the second thing. The third thing is, the third thing is that one thing we need to understand is there are so many blessings in our life and on the other side there are some not so good things. Right? I agree? So many people stay with you, so many people interact with you, so many people like you, they keep telling you I like you, thank you so much. You are wonderful, you know, you are a gift. So many people, if they have not been telling you, just pinch them if they are sitting here. But on the other side, one person tells you, I don't trust you. I don't trust you. I don't like you. What happens? Which one do you remember? Which one do you remember? Tell me, tell me, which one do you remember? Come on, some participation is appreciated. <laughs> which one? Because I don't want to remember this talk that, you know, I told in the talk and they didn't, they said we don't want to answer. <laughs> Stress. Stressful one. Do you notice this? This is a characteristic of the, of our storage system. When our storage system in our mind and memory becomes so negative that we remember only negatives. One person in so many people's contact tells you, I don't like you. This I don't, somehow this don't becomes bigger and bigger in font size. The more you remember it, the more it becomes bigger and bigger in font size. So if one person told you, I don't trust you, and so many people, we have to learn how to, you know, convert this memory system from being negative to being extremely positive. These are aspects for motivation. This is stress. The stress is when your story, and then imagine when this person says, I don't trust you or I don't like you, and he's forgotten about it. Some people just forget what they blabber. It's blabbering, you know. And you and he comes in front of you. Have you noticed that surge of emotions coming in front of you? You know, in your system. Anyone agrees to this fact? Anyone agree? Not everyone agrees to this fact. No, I think I'm speaking Latin here. <laughs> I'm not speaking your mind. Then. Do you notice this? In this surge of emotions. And he's very normal. He's like, hey, hi, how are you? And you go, <laughs> <laughs> And then you want, then after that, what happens? You need a justification. Why yesterday did you tell me I don't like you? Now this guy, just blabber. He also doesn't know. It's all emotion, garbage. It came out. And now he has to justify his garbage. And you will believe in his garbage. Which means your mind will become garbage. Listening to his garbage system. How do I let go all this? How do I learn to install the <coughs> super positive? What do you say? Today, today, you know, these days, if you look at the media, you just open the newspaper and there is so much you think you read about violence and somehow in your system you feel everybody is like that. 
If you imagine you're walking down and somebody is walking behind you, you know, and if you took the right turn and this guy goes behind you, have you noticed there is like, it's not like, oh, my community has become so famous, everyone wants to come there. <laughs> it's like this, somebody is going to do something to me. What do you say? Yes? No? Somehow we need to, you know, for our small children, for our engineers, for our, you know, students in college, I think somewhere we need to install this trust back. We need to reignite, you know, community living, living together, and reignite these values that it is possible to be happy. And this is what meditation does. Meditation exactly does all these three things for us. Okay, now let me see whether you are listening to me or not. Exam time. You have exams here? No, you don't have exams. You are done with it. <laughs> I can see on your face. When you are done with exams, you have a big smile. <laughs> First point, first point, what is the first point, tell me? Life has stress. Life? Life has stress. Life has stress. And do you find out from where you got it? Do you find out from where you got it? Does it matter? Wherever it comes from, learn to de-stress. Learn meditation. Learn the, you know, bathing of the mind every day. Some people just walk over, they look at you, they don't smile at you, they have transferred some stress. You wouldn't catch it from where you got it. Second point. Second point, oh, there is only one guy who is listening to me. Brilliant. Hello, front benchers. It's the first time the back bencher is answering in my course. The front benchers. See life from a bigger context, bigger perspective, as if look at life from a bigger perspective. Sometimes it's okay to drop things. It's okay. Because after 50 years, your Facebook account, this is such a balance between knowing this and being passionate in life. You need to have a balance between that. Knowing this, that everything will end, and yet being passionate about life, every moment, that balance walk has to be done. And this is what meditation does. I'm not saying just drop things. I'm saying sometimes it's okay to drop distress. Third point. Let me see third point. What about it? Third point. Storage. Anyone? I'm giving you a clue. Uh -uh. Focus on the positive. Thank you. I have the front bencher also listening to me now. Focus on the positives. Yeah, there are people, there are situations. Don't make it so big. To support my talk, you know, to support what I just said and to give it the scientifically what happens when we are stressed. Most of you know when you are stressed how it looks, how you feel and what happens, right? Most of you know that you feel very contracted when you are stressed. You don't feel a connection with people. Most of you know that you feel separate. You feel I'm different. You feel down in energy. So I got with myself just for this talk today. Surprisingly, we thought we'll get Ronnie also. Ronnie heads the Ronnie Newman heads the scientific division of the art of living. She has dedicated her life for meditation and science. So at the, you know, when meditation, I remember I worked here in the 90s, meditation was not so cool that time. If you tell somebody I'm meditating, you'd say, oh really? What does that do? But today, people have appreciated it. And thanks to people like Ronnie, who have done and given a complete scientific approach and seen what happens when you meditate continuously and what happens to your parameters in the body. So I'll... Invite Ronnie to come. Ronnie, please come. Thank you so much for coming here today. See, this clap worked for me. It may not work for her. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all of us here, obviously, if you come to a library, then you have some commitment to succeed in life, to make something of your life, correct? And how many people have feel stress along the way. 
exams, pressure, classes, balancing work life. Okay, what if you were to find out that having the competitive edge to do what you wanted to be, to be more successful and more productive, required that you be happy? That you have to master happiness in order to be successful. And that's what science is actually showing us. A recent Harvard University study showed that happy people are 37% more productive than non-happy people. We know that our brains work better when we're happy. Our immune systems work better when we're happy. And we even live an average of 7.8 years longer when we're happy. So happiness is not just a self-indulgent or self-absorbed state. It is actually what Rajesh was talking about. It's where meditation takes us because our natural state as a species is to be happy. We are wired to be at our best, to be at our strongest, to be at our most creative when we are happy. So then the question comes, well, okay, if the divine plan was for us to be happy, how come there's so much stress and negativity in the world? Right? That's a good question. So part of the answer for that, what Rajesh was talking about, is that as a species, we're also wired to experience negativity more powerfully. There's a chemical surge that happens in the brain and the entire physiology when we are experiencing something that's not happy. And really, it's, it's valuable because it will save us if we're walking down to a canal here in Florida, and it's mating season for alligators, and an alligator jumps out, we want the stress response, right? We don't want to be sitting there, oh, what a cute little alligator, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? We want to just get up and go. And one of the things that happens when we have that stress response is that the glucose, which feeds our brain, goes from the brain to the exercising muscles to allow us to split, right? So while it's great during alligator mating season in Florida, it may not be great during exam time when you're an engineering student, right? Because we're wired for that. But the beautiful thing that science has found is that when people meditate, the structure of the brain literally begins to change. And so you can imagine that immediate fight or flight response and when you get nine compliments and then somebody says, God, you're such a jerk, and we remember that more, it's because it's chemically charged, that begins to change when people begin to meditate because of something called neuroplasticity. How many people have heard of that? Okay, this is a very smart group. Usually you get maybe half a hand. And then if you ask them, they go, don't ask me. <laughs> so very good. What that means is that our brains are not hardwired like a table, which is what we used to think like 20 years ago. But we know that until the day we die, we can continue to generate new brain cells, and we can physically change the structure of our brain. And what neuroscience tells us now is that, that structuring our brain to be happy is no different than learning to play a musical instrument or learning to play tennis. We have the capacity, we're wired as a species, for our brain to continue to grow and change and adapt. And one of the best ways to do that, anybody want to guess? Meditation. Absolutely. In fact, what it turns out that what happens in meditation is that the brain wiring responsible for negative emotions actually begins to wither and shrink and the wiring responsible for happiness and positive emotions begins to actually grow stronger. And there was an article recently published that said, how would you like to grow a bigger brain? <laughs> how many people would like to grow a bigger brain? <laughs> how many people know the other part of this, one of the other values of meditation, is that, well, let me see, how many people here are over 27? Can I see a show of hands? Okay. At least half. Well, I have very bad news for you. Your brains are beginning to shrink. By the, our brains grow to about 25, 26. By the time we hit 27, 
our brains begin to atrophy. And by the time we hit 40, and I see at least one or two people who look like maybe we're 40, the brain begins to atrophy at 5% per decade. 5% per decade. It's not a very good way to lose weight. <laughs> right? Now, however, while that is common, it turns out that meditation, specific forms of meditation, actually can reverse that. And what happens is that the brain, especially the part right here, the prefrontal cortex, which sits right behind our forehead and is responsible for our, our supposed sophisticated human intellect, it's very sensitive to the aging process and it actually atrophies, it thins with age. But when people begin to meditate, it actually begins to thicken. And the UCLA Center for Neuroimaging, um, one of the quotes that came out of there is that the research suggests that meditation can slow, stall, and even reverse age-related brain degeneration. In fact, the brains of 40 to 50-year-old meditators was equivalent to the, the brain size of 20 to 30-year-old non-meditator controls. My brain's 200. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. Okay, so. These are some of the values. The other part of meditation is that it enriches what is the most worthwhile, two things that are most worthwhile in life. Number one, how are we going to make this planet better? Right? Is it by me, 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 or is it by working together as one world family and for, by caring about each other? Which is the success? Me, 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 or one world family? One world family. And as a species, we're also wired to experience one world family. Children as young as three years old are found to display altruistic behavior. When, when the mother faints crying, they'll come and they'll bring the mommy a toy. No training. Three years old. As a species, we're wired for service, for altruistic behavior. In fact, altruism stimulates the pleasure center in the brain, the same area that cocaine stimulates without any of the side effects, and free, and makes you smarter. So that's one valuable thing about meditation, correct? Is that by getting rid of the stress and allowing our natural tendencies to emerge, society automatically becomes more altruistic and more service-oriented. That's one thing. The second thing is that we're better able to solve problems. And the third thing is that we're better able to connect with each other. To connect because when people have cortisol, the stress hormone, it narrows the focus and we can't pick up the cues from each other. That's not so good. So if you want to be connected, if you want to be of service, if you want to be happy, if you want to be successful, if you want to be productive, if you want to be dynamic, and if you want to live longer, then meditation is for you. Okay, so I think we'll bring back the Josh. Many reasons now, you know, scientifically also, right? You want to be happy, productive, resourceful, or if you want to live longer. So I want to invite, uh, and I want to invite Lisa, who just finished, a, you know, like I think last month, maybe. Or she finished a little longer back, but she finished a meditation program, and she would like to tell you about her experience of, of uh, how it was. Come, Lisa. Wonderful having you here. Um, I did the happiness program with Tushar, and I did the meditation we learned for 40 days straight, and um, I continued to do it. Um, it was a couple of days now, <laughs> and uh, we meet weekly as a group and do a group meditation. And um, previously, I had um, extremely high cortisol, and six, six months before, I was tested, and they thought I had. Shoes disease because my cortisol was so high. And I just, I tended to stress out about every little thing back then. And uh, after I did the happiness program and meditated, I had my uh, six month checkup and my cortisol was low. And I don't stress out about things as much. <laughs> and uh, I've noticed that um, I sleep better. Um, uh, it's, I kind of, it wasn't like right away, but after meditating more and more, So 
would you want to meditate after listening to all this? <laughs> yeah, it's it's case sami case ki so we should be done. What do you say? How many people want to meditate? Let me see. Maybe five minutes, ten minutes, like that, something. Ready? Okay. So the first. <laughs> The first rule of meditation is that you should be in an informal atmosphere. So, are you formal or are you informal right now? Are you okay with people sitting next to you? Doesn't look right. So, let's do like this. Let's just move, you know, look around and just introduce yourself to people around you. Just say hello and just introduce yourself. <laughs> See, just check, check if you have not introduced yourself to someone, just introduce yourself. Just introduce, you don't need to ask whether you are married or not. And <laughs> just introduction. <laughs> you are not setting up a marriage bureau still. <laughs> okay, so okay, let's do a little warm up. You know, we need to keep our spine straight. So let's warm it up a little bit, our body, so that the blood circulation is good. a smile also on your face. If you don't have a smile, just look how people are doing it. <laughs> Automatically get a smile on your face then. Yeah, and up and little down. Okay, let's let's disturb the people in the library. <laughs> Nancy is not like it. <laughs> Nancy is okay with her, she says. <laughs> Okay, so let's see if we can move a little bit sideways, a little bit sideways. It's okay if you just, just crash into the other person, it's okay. <laughs> you just said, you know, hi, hello, you know the person. You're now our best friend. <laughs> and now, let's look to the right. Let's look to the right. Just loosen up the neck a bit by doing some neck rotations. If there's pain at some place, just stop there, breathe out. Loosen up that whole section. Let's see if you can make big circles from the top of your head. You have done the, you can do the counterclockwise. In India, they say it as anti clockwise. It took me a long time to change this. And relax. And relax. See if you can sit a little tall. Can you sit a little tall? Hips are supported, you are sitting tall, your legs, feet are on the ground. Keep them, don't cross them, and let's keep our eyes closed. Let's keep our eyes closed. A few minutes, let's close our eyes. Let's agree to all the sounds in the environment first. The sound. The sound of people walking and breathing, the screeching on the sofa, chair. Let's agree to all sounds around you. Take another deep breath in. And 
Even an ice closed lips work on the breath a little bit. The breath is moving in and out. Just observe this phenomenon. A simple observation means this voluntary, involuntary as voluntary. Make the breath a little bit more longer. Let's make the incoming breath 2 seconds longer and the outgoing breath 4 seconds longer. So you are breathing in more and you are breathing out 4 seconds more. Breathe in. Breathe out completely. Breathe in. Breathe out. Let's do three more breaths. Incoming breath is two seconds longer, and the outgoing breath is four seconds longer. Along with doing this, also become aware of the phenomenon that incoming breath is energizing the body, and outgoing breath is removing all the stresses from the system. So you become aware of this body. You have a body. You are much bigger than that. Let's relax the body, change the change. Let's coil the mind around the body. Let's coil the mind around the feet and start from. Relax the toes. Set the feet loose. Slowly coming up to the knees. Highways on the hips. Genders. The abdomen in the middle region, the stomach. The 
Body is like the trunk of a tree, and the mind is like the creeper. So we go in the arm, come to the shoulders, relax the shoulders. Both hands. Please relax your eyebrows, relax the tongue, relax the temples, relax your whole body. Find this comfortable and easy. One more breath in. And relax. Let's watch all the pain that the hearts that is coming in your mind. Just think at all the thoughts lying in the mind. Keep talking to them. This time, let's look at the emotions, the feelings. Present or unpleasant emotion. Embrace both and relax.
Come away one more time of the thoughts in your mind, the emotions. Become aware of the body and environment around you. Keep a gentle smile on your face. Begin one more time. Start to feel your breath in slowly and gradually, and open your eyes. Welcome back. So how was it? Tell me. How was it? Good. Okay. Bad. Good. Okay. Bad. What was good? What happened? Why do you like it? Tell me. Why do you like it? What happened? It's refreshing. Refreshing. Sweets. What? I I feel more awake. I feel new. more alive. Alive. New. Awake. Okay. Yes. Totally blank. Still wonderful. Wonderful. Brilliant. Anyone else? Yes. Kind of makes me feel cozy inside myself. Like I've had a nice. Wonderful. Feeling cozy inside. Being cozy with yourself. What a nice thing to do. <laughs> This is romance. True romance. <laughs> Two more people. Anybody? What happened? Peaceful. Feeling peaceful. One last person. Let's just slow down. Everything looks like it has slowed down, right? Very nice. Everything looks like it's still it's slow down. Wonderful. You notice? You notice the mind when you came in, and now is it different? How many agree it's different? Different for a better, better thing. Agree to that? Just look at that. You know how many minutes? Sixteen minutes. Your eyes were closed. Sixteen minutes. Your eyes were closed for sixteen minutes. You have made a friend in yourself today. Suddenly, you have fallen in love again. <laughs> If this you do and practice every day, I would say it's a great chance that you know you can be happy every single day. Day by day, let's approach it day by day. Will I be happy always? Forget about it. Day by day. What do you say? Possible. And this we teach in the Art of Living courses. Tushar is a teacher here. He just, you know, and he is the one who takes courses here. He's a brilliant person. He keeps laughing like 800 times in a day. <laughs> so if you are around him, you cannot but laugh. You know, he his smile is contagious. So. He'll be so light, and he'll be just laughing for everything. Oh, you lost your shoes! <laughs> he is a very light person. He's like a feather, you know. And to meet such people, I think it's a privilege. It's a privilege. So 
make sure that you log on and come back learn this meditation today i did a guided meditation you should go back home and try to do it and you know the same effect doesn't happen until you learn it so it will be great great to learn this and thank you so much for joining us thank you these are thank you Surprisingly, I'm just off. You know, this is like transit for me. Yeah. Melbourne has been a transit. I am just on my way taking the flight to India, and Tushar said, Nancy, and they got together and they said, let's let's organize a talk here. Please come in here. So I said, okay. You know, this week is good. I just came in to have some good food in Melbourne and relax <laughs> by the beach. But I I landed up at seven in the restaurant and it was closed. So I'm going to catch up today again. <laughs> I think it's a beautiful place. You guys in Melbourne have no reason to be unhappy. Let me tell you that. <laughs> If you be unhappy, I'm going to I'm going to take you somewhere with me because here just the beach, the sand, the sun. Come to Portland, you know, when there's sun, they say, "Wow, it's a sunny day." <laughs> it's like that. If you have the sun, the beach, the sand, so you kind of feel. Make sure you come on the Art of Living courses and just sign up the stress forever. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Rajesh. Uh, thank you, Rani, for speaking so beautifully, and I, I'm sure all of us enjoyed it a lot. Right? Meditation and everything. Thank you for coming out. Um, thank you once again, Nancy, and everyone else for hosting this. Um, I would also like to invite you to um, come to the Art of programs. I'm teaching one this month uh, from April 28 to 30th. How long is it? It's uh, three days, um, three hours in total, <laughs> and it's right here in the Unity of Melbourne. So, um, yeah, you can uh, contact me. My email is tushar t u s h a r b at artofliving dot org. So, um, and I also keep doing. Weekly, bi-weekly meditation sessions right here in the room next to us, right here in the library. So all of you are invited to come to that. And, uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming, Rajesh. And um, the last meditation room session in the library will be Wednesday, May second, right smack in the middle of Bible study. So thank you very much for coming, everyone. Thank you.